All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to lecture two of uh, optimization techniques. My name is Ashutosh Mahajan. Uh, reading for this uh, lecture is uh, section 1.2 and section 2.1, uh, at least the first half uh, from Roger Fletcher's book. Uh, recall from lecture one that um, uh, we are minimizing uh, a general uh, nonlinear function without any constraints. Um, and that means that uh, given uh, f, uh, we are able to uh, find uh, value of f uh, at any given point uh, and possibly also uh, the derivatives of f, the numerical values of derivatives of f uh, at uh, any given point. This is all we know uh, about f. Uh, in general, we f may be too complicated uh, and we may not even know whether it is a, a quadratic or a polynomial or sigmoidal or any other complicated function. Uh, so, um, uh, so, when we know uh, only the values of f, uh, you know, at, at some points that, that we can specify, or if we know uh, only the derivatives of f at certain points, uh, then we say uh, that we have local information about f. Uh, and this is sort of a uh, informal language. Uh, I don't think the book uh, says anything about local information. Uh, but uh, just for our understanding, we can say uh, that uh, you know if, if we are able to find values of f and some information about the derivatives of f uh, at some given points, uh, then we say that we have local information about f. Uh, so the value of f uh, tells us, uh, you know. Uh, how good or bad uh, we are uh, in terms of minimization uh, and the derivatives uh, tell us uh, what can happen uh, around f uh, you know nearby f at points nearby uh, the given point uh, so um, so let's uh, look at uh, this part a little bit more uh, uh, closely uh, about uh, what can derivatives tell us about f so, uh, derivatives play a central role in continuous optimization uh, uh, or, or nonlinear optimization because they tell us uh, that uh, given uh, a point, uh, let us say x dash, right, uh, what is um, what is the derivative of f? At this point x dash. Okay. Uh, it gives a sense of how fast f is changing around x x dash okay so how fast um, f can change uh, if i move slightly uh, around 
next dash okay so um, so that is you know sort of an informal uh, motivation of of what what is a derivative uh, i i am sure that you you all have uh, seen derivatives before and and understand uh, what what they mean uh, so um, uh, let us very quickly look at an example uh, and 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 revise uh, very fast for what it does so example uh, let's say my f is um, x1 square minus 5x1 uh, I'm sorry x1 square minus 2x1 um, so uh, so df by dx1 which is the derivative of f uh, at x1 equal to let's say 5 is uh, 2 into 5 minus 2 which is 8 so um, uh, if I do a quick plot of this function it looks like a parabola uh, and 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 x1 so so this is really x1 equal to 1 so 2 3 4 5 will be somewhere here so so what what, what this derivative is telling me that if I move slightly uh, to the right uh, towards the increasing direction of x1, uh, if I move epsilon bit in this direction, uh, then the function value will go up by about 8 epsilon, for epsilon really, 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 really small. Um, and if I move in the, in, in the negative direction, that means the opposite of increasing x1 uh, then my function will go down by 8 times of epsilon so uh, so suppose i am at x1 equal to 5 uh, and i am able to evaluate f there and also find the derivative uh, i i can see that uh, moving in in this direction uh, is going to help me in minimizing the function uh, as against moving in this direction okay so so that in a nutshell is how uh, these optimization algorithms work uh, so what 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 these algorithms do um, pick a point let's say x1 uh, evaluate local information at x1 and based on it you try to move to a better point better meaning a, a different point which which has a lower objective value uh, and and many times it is written, uh, done by starting from the first point or, or the previous point and moving uh, by a product of alpha times s where alpha is a scalar and it tells me how far should I go um, also known as 
step length um, and S is the direction in which I should go. Uh, so again if I come back to my example uh, suppose my first point which I arbitrarily chose to be x1 equal to 5 then I gather some local information uh, I can get the function value at x1 equal to 5 it will be 15 um, and I know that uh, if I go to the right if I increase x1 slightly uh, I, I will increase the value of f uh, by roughly 8 times my step size and if I go to the left then then I should decrease the value so so my s in this case is minus 1 so I'm, I'm going to decrease x1 um, so in 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 a general uh, problem when 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 we have uh, multiple dimensions x is not a scalar uh, then then things are a bit more tricky uh, in so let's write it uh, in higher dimensions higher than one dimension uh, there are infinitely many directions to choose from um, for example now let me draw another plot and here I have two variables x1 and x2 uh, suppose my function is uh, 5x1 square plus x2 square minus 2x2. Um, so now I am unable to plot uh, this function uh, on a two-dimensional plane because I need at least two variables just to mark the domain uh, and the function would be a third axis which will come out of this uh, slide uh, and it would be cumbersome for me to draw. Um, but suppose I am at point 0.55 so I am not going to draw function values here I am um, at 5.5 uh, then in what all directions can I move uh, I can potentially go up that is increasing x2 while keeping x1 constant uh, or I can go uh, towards the left that means keeping x2 constant uh, and changing or reducing x1 uh, but I can also go somewhere in, in, in between uh, and potentially uh, you know many many uh, directions um, unlike my one dimensional case where there were exactly two dimensions where uh, or two directions where I could move either increase x1 or decrease x1 uh, but in, 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 in case of two dimensions or higher uh, the number of directions I can possibly move uh, is infinitely many uh, and and these directions are not uh, scalar multiples of of other directions they they are sort of independent of of other directions so uh, it's not very clear uh, or easy uh, how uh, these directions can be chosen and and it's actually a, an important part of of these algorithms uh, this choice of s once an s is fixed then you can do some sort of search and pick a scalar uh, sometimes you might want to uh, pick a scalar first alpha first and then decide a, uh, a nice direction to move in so we will we will try to look at these algorithms a little bit later